Hey everyone, welcome back. It's TJ, and today we're going to be covering how I almost completely swapped over to Linux. I do have a Windows machine running out in the server rack, if you guys watched that video. Uh, that is kind of my business PC that some things you just need to run Windows for. So that's why I'm, I've got it running, and just makes things easy. I'd rather not spend all my time just trying to make things work with Linux that don't work. Um, but... Yeah, let's, let's jump into it. Alright, so this is my desktop in Ubuntu. The big reason that I actually bit the bullet and swapped to it is... Uh, I saw some news that the Microsoft Recall DLLs were being added to File Explorer, and that just did not sit well with me. So I ended up just biting the bullet, swapping to Ubuntu. I've been using it for about six years from... I think I was using 16.04 um, and then 18.04 and I was using 18.04 up until upgrading both to 24. So it's been a really pleasant experience. I, the machine sitting behind me is what this is running on. It's a 5950X, 64 gigs of RAM, 6900 XT, so it's all AMD and it's dual boot. So if I if I'm trying to play games, because this is also my personal machine, uh, I if it doesn't work on Linux, uh, there's been a couple that I've noticed that have caused problems. Uh, one being Civ 6, for sure. Um, it seems like you have to do Linux to Linux. You can't just do Windows and Linux cross-play. Um, so there's that one, and there's a couple other games that just... They don't run smooth on Linux yet, but with Proton, it's been phenomenal. So, I can play games on it. That that all works. And it's just been a smooth experience. Why am I enjoying this so much? So, let's open up a terminal window here. So, as you can see, it's got the transparency effects on the uh, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon background here. Uh gotta love giant robots but this is kind of how I do most of my workflow so as you can see here we can get this full screened uh, if we go to top which is kind of the built-in process manager you can kind of see what this looks like it's essentially task manager but Linux in the terminal um, I my preference here uh, let me clear this out is to run HTOP so it's a slightly fancier version of top, but it gives every single processor uh, utilization with clock speed and uh, temperature if it's available. And then it gives your RAM. So you can see I'm using just under eight gigs of RAM, which running the same workload I'm running now, uh, I, I was seeing spikes up to closer to 16 gigs, uh, especially when I was running Unity. So you can also see like process IDs and which users are running it. Um, if you need to search for, say, OBS that I'm running here, you can see it's right there. If I needed to force kill it, you hit F9, and then I usually go with 9, and it's the immediate kill. Um, but we can escape and not kill that or would lose the recording here. Um, but yeah, and then to quit, you just hit Q and you're good to go. Next, uh, one of the things that I thoroughly enjoy about Linux is the window manager. So if we're, if we're doing game dev, for example, we could have Unity open on this window. We can hit Control Alt, right arrow, and then be at a completely different desktop and then do it again. Here's another desktop. And jumping between them, super fast. So if if I'm trying to mess with something on Unity, it's like, oh, I need to change this in code. I can jump here and be on a code window, have it full screen, and then jump back. And it's all seamless and it works. Uh, one thing that is different with Linux than Windows is I have it set to just be my primary display that gets moved. Uh, I'm not showing my vertical monitor here, but it's the same 4K resolution except vertical. 
and this monitor doesn't change. So if there's something that I need to have static over on the right, I can have it static and then jump between this one and just keep my workflow fast, smooth. It's been nice. So what happens if I need to run Windows? Well, there's several things that I can do here. Uh, this machine is dual boot, so if I need to play games, for example, like I said, I can just reboot it, choose Windows, and I'm in Windows, good to go. Um, but if I'm trying to do development, and this is something that I don't see a lot of people talking about on YouTube for actually doing Windows development on Linux. And if you have an extra Windows computer that's running Windows, doesn't matter which version, but professional, you can run remote desktop. And what that means is, in our case on Linux, we'll use uh, Remina. I think that's how you say this, uh, right here. Um, but in this case, we can just remote into, if you guys watched the network setup video or the network rack video I did uh, about a week or two ago, it's the little GMK Tech mini PC that's out in my server rack. So it's running headless, so without a monitor, and we can just use it like Windows. So you can see we've got Windows Taskbar, but if we come over here, there's the Linux start menu or taskbar setup. So they're both running next to each other. Here's all the commands for the remote desktop so I can full screen it. Now it looks like we're just running Windows. And we can open up File Explorer, we can uh, open up Task Manager here. I can actually show what's running on this thing. So it's a Ryzen 7 8845HS with the 780M graphics. So it's an 8-core, 16-thread machine. It's got 32 gigs of RAM a terabyte SSD, and two and a half gig networking. That's tied into my 10 gig infrastructure. So if I need to transfer files from this machine, it's it's faster than just gigabit, which I'm guessing we can almost cap out a standard hard drive at just over 200 megabytes a second. But this is kind of my machine for doing any kind of like business software development on and it's I find it's better to run a physical piece of hardware remote into it and do development than it is to run a virtual machine depending on what you're doing so in my case I'd rather have the physical hardware especially with something like this that's not taking up much space it's just power, a power port and network port and I'm able to do all of this work without leaving my chair at all. That's kind of how I've been running Windows on this side. And then if we need to leave this, we can hit the disconnect and we're back in Linux. And while this is up, I can also, uh, if I get rid of the full screen, you can see it's this little window right here and it scales the resolution of the desktop. So you don't have to change anything in Windows. You can say, oh, I need it this big up in the corner for doing testing of some kind. So nifty little feature. I don't know how many people actually need to use something like this, but this is how you do it in case you ever need to. We've got, of course, gaming. Uh, there's plenty of people that are out there that'll show how Proton works on Linux, uh, but I'd rather show the actual game dev side of things and how I'm running stuff. One of the commands that I really enjoy using with the Linux terminal is Control R, so it's a reverse search, and I can do VI for Vim, and I can launch my Unity script or edit it more specifically. And for some reason, with Ubuntu, I've been having this issue where I need to make sure I set the no sandbox flag on Unity. Whenever I go to start Unity, I have to make sure I run the scripts to set the no sandbox flag. And if I do that, 
we use the dot slash and then the name of the script. And just like that, we're running the Unity Hub. So we can jump into any of the projects that are on this machine. Right now I've just got Subby and then uh, Periodic is a project that needs some love. I'll probably be touching on that as soon as we get Subby done. Subby's kind of the prototype for some of the backend systems for Subby. Or not Subby, Periodic. It's a much bigger game. It's kind of Mega Man based on the periodic table of elements, but I don't know if I want to change that a little bit and see if doing a Metroidvania style would work better. Kind of combining the two and see if it works. Because it's game dev. Let's have some fun with it. But we can open up Subby, and you can see it, it takes a little bit of time to open up. But as soon as it opens... We're in the Unity editor, and it's all good to go. Uh, and if we need to edit code, we can do uh, it's under Git, Game Dev, and Subby, and then just do uh, code dot. And just like that, I'm in VS Code. Now that we're in VS Code, the an example I gave earlier was jumping between desktops for doing development here. So what I do, I've got the Linux, the Windows key on my keyboard. If I hit that, I can just drag VS Code to this other desktop. If I hit Escape, now we've got Unity on this desktop. It's Control Alt, right arrow. Now we're over here. And we have VS Code open here. We can make changes, go back, back in Unity. We, it can recompile, do what it needs to do, and it's good to go. So that's actually my normal workflow for doing game development if I can. With Windows, it was a little more difficult. Like I said, the right monitor on this stays static. So I can keep, say, music, or if I'm trying to research how to do something and follow a tutorial, I can have that web page up and then jump between desktops on this other monitor, keep the full screen view, and just go from there. So that, that's kind of wrapping up the, the experience and what I've been using Linux for. There's plenty of other things that I've been able to do. Uh, I've got some JavaScript projects that I've been playing with, specifically with Node and Electron. And we might get into some of that here. I'll probably do a tutorial on how I've got the build system set up and, and just overall kind of doing multiple forms of development on the same machine and that's if anyone's interested but other than that that's been my my almost full swap to linux uh it's it's been a blast and if anyone is interested in trying linux highly recommend either pop os ubuntu i know for a fact with ubuntu if you want to run it you can set up a flash drive plug it into your machine and test it before actually installing it. So you can just run it from the flash drive, see if you like it, give it a shot, play with it, see if see if it matches your workflow. And you can you might even be able to run Proton with Steam and try some other stuff. So uh, if anyone does, let me know how it goes down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, throw a like on it. Until next time, TJ out. Thank you.